26-year-old, 5-foot, 9-inch Tim Stapleton would make his NHL debut on Long Island. Kind of been waiting my entire life for this, and uh, it's exciting, but I've also been ready for it, so I'm just uh, excited to hopefully uh, get in the lineup tonight. There's a lot of people that have helped me along the way, and um, you know, like I said, I'm just uh, been waiting for this opportunity, and uh, you know, hopefully I get the chance tonight because I, I feel ready. The diminutive forward who led the Marlies in scoring was chosen by Ron Wilson to participate in the shootout as a reward for his strong play, and it proved to be the right choice. You gotta love this the way Ron Wilson does this. I just absolutely love the way he throws kids right into the fire to see what he can do. Can win the game! And he does! Timmy Stapleton wins the game in a shootout in his first National Hockey League game! Tim Stapleton led the American Hockey League in shootout goals, brings his towns to the National Hockey League. That has to feel immense in your first ever game in the NHL. <laughs> yeah, it does actually. I mean, I had a couple chances today and, um, you know, I was minus two, actually, and uh, just to be able to kind of contribute, uh, it's definitely a good feeling. The kid's a sniper. He scored at every level, and I, the only thing, you know, it is his first game if he'd be nervous, but I never saw any nervousness in him all night long. I'm glad it worked out for him. I'm sure it's a huge thrill for him. Stapleton wasn't the only Leaf call-up to open some eyes this season. Truly the opposite of Tim Stapleton's 5'9", 160 pounds. Phil Oroskovic weighs in at 6 feet 4 inches tall, 220 pounds. And right from the get-go, he made people notice how big he plays. He was leading their team in plus minus, plus 15. So the one thing he can do for sure is defend. We don't expect him to be an offensive player. But if he can be physical, uh, defend well, uh, then it'll just... Uh, you know, make it a little bit easier for him at next year's training camp. It means uh, the world to me, and uh, I wouldn't be anywhere without my parents and uh, all the support I get back home. So uh, I'm sure they're really happy, and I'm really excited myself. As you can tell, I haven't stopped smiling since I've been up here. So I'm going to do my best out there and uh, stay positive. Now Oreskovic, another shot there! Karofsky goes and gets him the puck. That's great. That's fantastic stuff. Phil Oreskovic with his first NHL goal. What a moment for the kid from Brampton has scored his first in the National Hockey League. And a lot of family and friends at home watching. It's uh, it's really exciting. The guys in the room, they lift me up. And uh, I don't think I've stopped smiling since, uh, since I've been up here, never mind after the goal. So... Just kind of swung away at a bouncing puck. Fortunately, it went in off uh, one of the defender's legs, and I didn't know right away if I had got it or if uh, Gravel had tipped it in front, but once they started pointing at me, I knew it was me, and it was, it was really exciting, great feeling. It's definitely, uh, definitely a good one, and Kuja was phenomenal. It was real nice to get the two points tonight. Brad May sat out the April 7th contest in New Jersey. However, he didn't complain. The very next night, May would play in his 1,000th NHL game against the team he started his career with, the Buffalo Sabres. A member of the Sabres, Canucks, Coyotes, Avalanche, Ducks, and now the Maple Leafs, the team he grew up watching. Tonight we celebrate his 1,000th NHL game. Ladies and gentlemen, Brad May. To commemorate this very special moment, the Maple Leafs have crafted for you a silver stick. Down the shafts are listed the names of the 20 men who accomplished this feat before you. On the blade appears your name. Congratulations, Brad! The summer going into the season brought a lot of changes to the Toronto Maple Leafs Hockey Club. A new coaching staff meant new ideas. A new outlook on the future meant pushing for the playoffs. And a new group of faces meant finding exactly what the franchise needed to head it in the direction it wanted to go. Mikhail Grabowski was acquired on July 3rd from the Montreal Canadiens for a second round pick. Ron Wilson, along with his new teammates, took an immediate liking to Grabowski and his commitment to the club. He ended his first season with 20 goals and led all Eastern Conference rookies in scoring. Uh, Grabble can play for me anytime. He plays like that, that hard. I wish we had some more guys who showed as much heart and courage as, as Grabble does every single night. No matter how he gets cut, hit, uh, down and out, he comes right back. You can't stop him. Of course, my friend told me you can't 
able to score 20. <laughs> Someone told you you can't? Yeah. And just I try. And, uh, but, uh, you know, it's uh, because I have a very good line and the uh, coach gave me ice time. I was happy for, for Grabble, uh, you know, to get his 20th goal. Not many rookies uh, ever achieved that. The line is Ochen Jarka. Ochen Jarka in English means? Very hot. <laughs> Jeff Finger signed a four-year contract with Toronto on July 1st of 2008. He was brought in to be a steadying force on the back end and a mentor for young Luke Shen. He suffered a setback in training camp and missed out on the start of the season due to a broken foot, but was a very effective addition to the Leaf lineup when he joined in late October. He led the team in block shots with 157. Jeff's intangibles and leadership will be a key as this team moves forward with its youth. I couldn't have uh, written it better you know, for myself in terms of coming to an organization like this. I grew up watching them. You know, on Hockey Night in Canada, uh, you know, ever since I was, you know, a baby pretty much. Nicholas Hagman signed on as a free agent with Toronto on the heels of a 27-goal campaign with the Dallas Stars last year. In the latter half of the season, Hagman battled concussion problems, but still managed to score 22 goals in 65 games, putting him in the top three for leading scores on the Maple Leafs. As a team, we played well at times and then times we didn't play that well so now uh, now we know what it how tough the league is a lot of young guys know how much it takes to uh, to uh, to win in this in this league and uh, hopefully hopefully next year we can uh, we uh, we won't be here talking right now another player plagued by injury this year was defenseman Mike Van Rijn he came in excited to be playing close to his hometown of London his season, however, took a turn for the worse when a hard hit by Tom Kostopoulos in a November game against Montreal left Van Rijn out for a month due to a concussion. His return to action lasted only three games before he would suffer the same fate once again. Still, when on the ice, Van Rijn showed flashes of why Toronto is pleased to have him on the roster. This is my fourth training camp of the year. Uh, yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, one game at a time. Yeah, one game at a time. You know, it just, uh, it's been tough, but uh, hopefully I'm over it now and, and uh, you know, put a string of games together. Jonas Frogren was drafted back in 1998 by Calgary, but had never played in the NHL. He has spent the last 10 years playing in the Swedish Elite League. He signed with Toronto on July 8, 2008, and although only playing in 41 games this season for the Leafs, he was often viewed as a fearless defenseman. Nikolai Kuleman, who was drafted 44th overall in 2006 by the Toronto Maple Leafs, playing in the NHL wasn't the only transition that Kuleman had to make. Speaking English was an obstacle, but he was lucky to have some teammates who understood him and helped him along the way. As the season went on, he showed signs of progression and the potential to be an effective player. What sorts of challenges uh, is he facing right now, I guess, in, in the style having to change? He seems to be doing well, so it doesn't really seem to be that much of a challenge, but maybe there is. He's just trying to get used to the, this game right now, and uh, the more he plays, the more he's going to use of North American hockey, you know, style of hockey, and uh, he's going to be more confident and stuff, but that's the main challenges that he has right now. I've been really fortunate uh, in working in San Jose that every year we tried to introduce two, three, four, five young guys uh, and I have to give a lot of credit to my assistant coaches who spend more of the time individually. I kind of co coach the team collectively and set the direction. Um, stuff runs through me but they're doing all the work with video, the individual stuff at the end of practices. We have our normal practice, 45 minutes. Each of the coaches works with a specific group. I think the, the assistant coaches did an outstanding job this year.